The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. On this Friday, May the 13th, Friday, we're looking at the Dow of 382 points at 32,107. So uh, let me just do this real quickly because it's Technical Friday. I should go to this chart that I show subscribers. Uh, subscribers, you didn't get this. I sent everything out and it came out as three icons that it should have been a scroll down and you saw the charts. We sent out an update. Thank goodness the update was I didn't want to do anything until 8.40 this morning. And that's exactly what we got. <clears throat> Might have got one particular buy, but definitely got another that's up really nicely from the low. Day is young. Let me explain what I'm looking at. I actually got rid of these things. I typed it in. I thought it was getting messy, but it's so important. You know, I've got this pattern that I call a Roman Chapman Wave Roman candle. We talk about that. I've spoken about that in the monthly chart of the S&P at the high. It's made me real nervous about that long wick. But look at this. You see this long green candle, this is at the bottom, instead of being at the top, called the Chapman Wave Green Roman Candle with a tiny little wick and a, at the top and a long body and then a green, in this case, a green body that's half to three quarters of the low. We did that once and we had a fabulous rally for about, if you had to count the bars, it was about two and a half, three weeks. And then we took it out and we plunged from the uh, 33,150 January 24th low to 35,824 high made an arch formation, the dreaded H, tumbled down and made a brand new one on the 24th of February, exactly one month later, 32,272. And that one lasted also quite a while, but it only ran up to a peak B. The other one went to peak C minus, failed. This went to a peak B and then pulled back sharply and then had that spectacular run to 35,372, pulls back sharply, runs up to the high of have I not written that date in? I believe it was April the 23rd or so at 35,492 peak E in that cup formation. I drawn in the vertical lines to say, uh-oh, one was strong on the left side. The retracement to the new high was weak and we started coming down. And then we made another one that I called right there, 32,449 on the 2nd of May. I said, that is what I'm terming a half Chapman Wave Roman Candle. The body was just too too small, but everything else was right. And if we went halfway into the wick on any shorter term basis, watch out because we could take it out. Instead, we ran up for two days <coughs> before sneezing. Went to 34,170. I wonder what that is. Only time I sneeze is just during the show. Uh, 34,100. Ah, talking. Maybe that's called because of the filters in the nose, the schnoz. I don't know. Whatever happened, this is 34,117. Comes tumbling down in a dreaded H pattern. And then yesterday, we made the same thing with an even smaller body. So now I have to call it a quarter chapter or a mini chapter with Roman candle. The theory here is. If we go halfway into the wick within one or two days after that wick's low, in this case, 31,000, uh, I didn't, don't think I updated that, did I? Yes, 31,228 yesterday. That's very negative. But if we can close sharply above the high of yesterday, that's really important. But it isn't good to do it one day. You actually have to do it two out of three sessions. So that's the scenario we've got right now. And that's the reason why I say to subscribers, that's why we want to position ourselves in a certain way. And now we're going to see what happens because all of the technical stuff that I do was based on three potential outcomes over since Wednesday. One was that we have a rally, a very sharp rally, and it fails, and then we come back down, make a lower low, and then Friday, that's today, there's a rally that fails, and we close way off the low. It doesn't have to be negative, but just way off the low. And then 
the whole new and and then it should include the the Nasdaq, and then you'll get the the media. Just the weekend will be flooded with negativity. And Sunday night, the futures are down sharply. Monday, we come in and we get one of those really important lows. My thinking here is that too many stocks that I look at that are really important, like a Microsoft, like an Apple, in this is in the big, real big cap sector of the Dow, are just not. Um, I don't think they're ready for the major major low that would see us make the low for the year and then start moving up into new highs. I think this is a work in progress. So as it stands right now, what we're looking at is look at the chart. We're going to show you something quite interesting is that we've got the Dow up uh, 382. The S so off the lows. And now let me show you something also even, very, even more interesting. Within the context of the S&P, the weekly chart could in fact turn out to become a red at a low Chapman Wave Roman candle. Now let me explain it in greater detail. Because this is Technical Friday. Uh, there's nothing much to do unless you've got your positions. If some of you got your positions late yesterday afternoon, you've still seen a fantastic rally. If you've got positions that uh, you've just started, you need to see it sustained throughout the day. You see this candle right here? At a high, all-time high, in fact, 48.1862, there's a tiny wick and a long candle to the downside. For the first time, it goes to the black 14-period exponential moving average. It hasn't been there. It hasn't touched it since the breakout of the 20, of, of May, May of 2020. I would say May 2020 was approximately two years ago. And then it breaks it breaks this um, green nine period moving average, but then it closes the month halfway or just over halfway of the whole entire body. I said that's a Chapman Wave Roman candle. We saw it back in October of I'm sorry, yes, October of 2007, and that was the hint to say we've now got a sell signal that's pretty much going to go to a sell mode if we take out the wick within two sessions and go even lower. Well, we did that. Well, we did the same thing here. So this is the high of January. In February, we form another Chapman Wave Roman candle. Not ideal, but pretty close. And we go halfway into the wick, but close above it in March. And then whoosh, April, we go down, we go below. And now we've gone even lower. So this is the importance of the Chapman Wave Roman candle at tops. At bottoms, they have a different uh, implication. There's a difference if it's a green. There's a difference if it's a red. A green says, pushing above, says that you've got moment, a, a green that is at after you've come way off the lows. Green says something else. And now look at this candle. The day is young. What we're looking at is at 4,005, we've come off a low of 3,858. Just yesterday, if the candle, if we turn around and this candle closes, uh, let me put it this way, it negates the whole pattern if we close under 39.53. All right, there's a lot to discuss. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, got a bunch of questions. I want to just finish this up, and then we've got a ton of charts to look at. Oh, there's so many things to do. Let's just see what the E-mini is right now. E-mini is called E-A-B-C. You may see the one-minute chart. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so just let me do this because uh, I did this too when I was, uh, when I sat with Tommy uh, yesterday in his 9 a.m. show and then it again at 10 o'clock and I said, look at this incredible channel stuck between the tr uh, like a tube, a sloping down tube. Uh, the price is just stuck there. This is the E-mini 10-minute chart and it continued that way. In fact, after my show, which was here, it had the big rally and then went right back into the channel. And what did it do? Remember, I spoke about this technique. If you want to develop it, it's really fine. I've got webinars that talk about it. I had a number of people saying, could, could you go through these and, uh, uh, again? Well, all I do is I take a trend line. You've all got trend lines on your software. Every package has it. You might not have arches, which is a great shame. I'm, I, it's really an arch. I've divided the arch into, I could have it as an arch, but I've, I've, I've divided into quarters a semi of the semicircle. Um, that's um, over here, dreaded H pattern. And it went to a lower low. But look, during uh, Tom O'Brien's show, as I was listening to Tommy, uh, to Tom, uh, look, Four, five, five times in the 10 minute bars, we went into the Chevy Wave inside track propellant zone. It didn't break down, it held, it held, it held, and then it went slightly higher and then it broke out. It broke above, went to peak B, went to the 200 period. How important is the 200 period moving average? Well, when I was on my show, as I was wrapping up, it got right to that at a peak B and failed, went to a B minus. At the 200 period moving average, went back to the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone and ran up to a peak B just under the 200 period moving average. And remember, the closer you get to 200 period moving averages, the more importance it has both as a magnet and then as a propellant or repellent uh, line. Well, it was a repellent line and then it said, I'm done. I'm going to I'm going to push through and it's stored for th four bars and then boom. D, E, F, and then a G, and it pulls back, and the green nine period moving average over the 14. Now what we're doing is, you see how we've been above the 200 period moving average? Look how we're moving sharply high up 79 at 4,006. Now the buyers are being forced in because we didn't get the usual smash to the downside. Ho! Oh, this is going to be very interesting. One of the reasons why we're back, and I'm really hoping that uh, folks, my, for, for subscribers, I'd say to buy a particular thing um, and it went to with, 
it's a high price. I mean, the price itself is triple digit. It went to within pennies. So I'm hoping that you said, hey, I, I, I like this. The, the analysis is good. You could either missed it by nine cents or you just said, this is the area I want to be in. But we have got one of them that's doing fabulously right now. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I would have liked them both for a couple of reasons. That's okay. I'm very, uh, I'm strict about it. I have to call it a miss, but I know some of you said we did start the position there, and that's great. So here we are in leg D in the 10 minute chart. I just wanted to go through that. Now that's enough with this. Um, I'm going to get out of that. Let's go to everything else I wanted to discuss. Now the SP is up 82 points at 4,012. So the three scenarios was one that the market just ignores any good news and it just keeps uh, sidling down lower highs and lower lows, lower lows. The, the, the other one was that um, we, we make some kind of a low that was yesterday and then there's a good response today and instead of sharply pulling back this starts off, this kicks off a rally, but without what I, I call the climactic event of the VIX index, in this case, going above the highs of the, the uh, start of the war, that was back in uh, the 24th of February, uh, where it went to 37.79. I'm, I, I said, uh, the, we have to wait then. That means we've got a fabulous rally. Some of the stocks are going to, some of the stocks in the, in the, the very beaten down, like the ARKK, remember I was talking about that yesterday. Um, that's the area that's going to see the best response because what happens off the low, off the major, major turn down, there is, is it within minutes, You've got a 10, 15, 20, 30, sometimes even a 50% gain. And then the gains uh, start to shrink, but they're still strong. But they're nothing like the big tops. The tops start to see smaller and smaller increments percentage-wise because you're at a higher price. So now what we've got is the VIX index is down in the 2920s area. I'd said that yesterday. If the VIX can start to get to the 2920s, that's a much better sign, especially on a weekly chart. We want to see weekly charts close lousy on a Friday. That's usually a better sign than closing strong like it did three weeks ago. So that's number one. Number two is... Within the context of what we're looking at, let's look at the um, let's look at ARKK. So ARKK is up uh, four at 4302. It's up 10 percent, and uh, basically what we're looking at is the low of 3510. Oh, I had this drawn and then I had to shut down, so I didn't get the. I had this down. Um, the re another reason why I was really looking at this particular area for subscribers as a potential buy is because it went into the Chapman wave inside wedge. The reason why it's not there right now is that I had a shutdown suddenly yesterday. Uh, um, I can't remember if it was before my show or after my show. And I could not, I don't know what happened. I, I've had it fixed. Uh, my man came over and did everything I, I needed. Um, but it froze. I couldn't go to file and save. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't hit the little save button here. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And it was stuck. I could see the prices, but I couldn't do anything about changing the screens. So I had to shut down, unfortunately, and I couldn't save. So here we are. The Chapman Wave inside uh, track, propellant zone, the MACD is turning up. The histogram has been improving. I like that. There was a V-shape. Remember, I think I spoke about it yesterday that I'm seeing as the start of a V-shape. Now, what is a V-shape? Look at this. ARKK, there's your V-shape in the on-balance volume. People talk about different indicators. They use all sorts of things. And I say there are cut. It doesn't work 100% of the time. Just add it to your to your arsenal of tools because when it, when it kicks in, look at this top right here. When it kicked in, this is the February, the February on-balance volume high of the 12th. And a day later, it made a top. So, uh, sorry, shouldn't that was of 2021. Um, so, the, it doesn't work all the time. Let's go to something like, let's go, let's go to the QQQ. QQQ, look at this. QQQ. There it is. This is really, it's a nice start, but you want a V shape like that. 
and we haven't got anything like it just yet. So that's just saying, and, and now I can go back to my scenarios. And the scenarios say that if we don't get that kind of clim climactic Monday, it's almost, I, I wouldn't call it a crash because I, there's so much that's been done on the downside. I don't see a crash coming at all. I see this persistent rotation between the different stocks. Let's see what Microsoft's doing today. MSFT, I'm choosing Microsoft because it's, just, it's a great company. It's up six, it's up 2.57. Let's look at something like, um, what was the guy talking about the other day? Um, a firm. I mentioned the firm the other day. I mentioned how, how, how unbelievably smashed it was. So the guy comes on and he's talking about uh, yesterday. He's talking about how fa everything's going right. Everything's fantastic. Famous says, no, but you've got debt. This, I don't like your debt. I don't like the way the debt structure. And the guy says, no, this is fantastic. And that's what I'm saying, that you've got to be very selective here. There's a rotational aspect to this that says, the real stuff is the thing about as far as I can see. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even and give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So now we're going to go through stocks. ARKK, and a lot of people have spoken about this. Uh, a very nice move up 3.96 at 42.96. Is this the end? I suspect, and I'm going to draw this in, that there's going to be some kind of an arch formation as the rotation says, ah, just for the moment, let's favor the um, NASDAQ, which is just beaten down. So I think it can possibly go to the 50, uh, 49, 53 area. That's going to be the big test. I would not be surprised if a lot of people start to short at, at that point. Does it break the 35.10 low that was made uh, yesterday? For me, that's always a big question. I always say that they're fighting patterns. One is the V-shaped pattern, which would mean that this goes up from here, and you've got to start measuring left side to right side, etc. Today's the first day. I don't even think I need to do that. 
and the other is so it's two fighting patterns. One is the bullish V-shaped pattern, and the other is starting to arch over and make it some kind of a top. And how does it do the dreaded H pattern? Oh, we've got so many new people. Let me just do this. Dreaded H pattern, where is that? There it is. Dreaded H is right here. So I always look at three patterns, and I'm going to show you stocks right now. We're going to go to them. Um, straight line up, straight line down. Cup formation, arch formation. Mix of one and two or one and three. Here's one and three. This is the dreaded H. Every one of these is a dreaded H pattern. Look, look what I can do right here. Uh, dreaded H, look, there's a, this even just recently a dreaded H pattern. It fails the left side low and goes, it can go one to one to the downside, which is just done. Um, so uh, this is where we start to see histogram has to improve on the, on the MACD, V-shaped in the on-balance volume, stochastic only at 12%. By Monday or Tuesday, if this is still rallying towards, this, just touch the nine, the pink nine period moving average, if this manages to rally, the high today is 43.36. If it doesn't pull back today and it ha holds at least in the mid-range of 41, <coughs> Maybe they can be followed through on, on uh, Tuesday. So the Monday aspect would have given me a volatility, ex volatility index probably spiraling over the um, April high of the VIX. It hasn't done that. So this is called a semi, as far as I'm concerned, a semi-climactic relief rally. Uh, it's just it's the a, a mini earthquake with aftershocks to come. So ARC is a nice example of just a nicer, bigger picture. Look at the QQQ. QQQ is up 3.17. ARKK is up 10.49. Um, so if you want to match, I, I don't know at this particular point whether it's ARC I want or just kind of a generic... Uh, like a broader index and maybe buy a multiple of two or three of the index. I prefer at this particular point to be sticking to indexes rather than specific stocks, unless the specific stocks, you've done your homework, those are the ones you'd be wanting. You grab them and you just ride them and see where they go to. Okay. Within that context, I also decided to get a more conservative, a kind of a biotech stock that's held so well. And I've liked it. Probably should have got it when I wanted it two days or three days ago, but I like the action so far, and I want to be I I want to mix for for subscribers. We've got one that's doing really well uh, today. Uh, it's it's not in your usual uh, sector that people talk about. Uh, another one is um, looking at uh, looking at the broader context of what can rally here. So within that context, I'm just being very selective for subscribers. Now we can do this because I want to follow through with the questions that came in. Uh, what was that question that I just missed over there? Yes. So Hood, I had said a long, long time ago, in my overall analysis of the stock market for the mega big moves still to come, I think Hood, that's Robin Hood, will be in play, but I'm absolutely, totally ignoring it, I said, for a long time. When it hit... Seven point, I think seven seventy yesterday was it seven 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 seventy one, and it's up almost thirty percent today. It's up twenty four percent from the close of yesterday, at ten point six six. I'm not ruling this out because it's part of the vernacular that I'm looking at, that says to me, with so many, and I'm going to talk a lot more about this. With so many people working at home, you remember in the, for those of you who were around in the dot com dot com. Uh, bubble going from that 1999 late period going to early 2000s. Do you think anybody did any work at all, or do you think they were all looking at uh, wherever it is? And remember, I had my one of my things I was looking at for my big mega cycle was one day there would be stock tickers at McDonald's. Well, in fact, there was in in Manhattan at, at a couple of them there were there were stock tickers at, at McDonald's. Um, this is obviously before cell phones and everything. It was in the old days, uh, horse and wagon. Um, and my suspicion is that there's going to be a mega market somewhere. 
And now we've, we're filtering out so many different things. It doesn't necessarily have to have the Dow, but I like the mix of the Dow, so it could include the Dow. But it could go into back into crypto. It could go into something we haven't even thought of. But there's going to be something like the real estate market of 2007 and eight, where everywhere you went, people, I mean, if you stood at, the, you went to the bank, you, there were three people on their cell phones saying, yeah, I'm just waiting for a, a commitment or I'm waiting for, uh, to get papers passed. I, we haven't had that. That's why this, to me, is not the big market crash that we're talking about, that the, the end of the world for three years to come or more. I think that's still to come. And how does it come? There are people around the world, and I suspect trading in America stocks, something in America, that are trading from their computers at home. So when the big, big crash comes, nobody knows who was hurt until they see the sale sign. You remember the big Wall Street, I, I've got it somewhere that's that for sale. I, on about the third, uh, the Thursday, October the 30th, I think, or 29th of 1929, outside the New York Stock Exchange, there was a guy and he's got his beautiful Oldsmobile or something orders, and he's got the sign that says, for sale, need money for, fa for food, for family. And we will not know until we got all these cars out there saying for sale, for sale, because it will be so silent. You won't know that Granny, whatever her name is, was playing whatever the hot stock is. That's what happened in 2000. They used to talk about they used to talk about money going from it was all what was it widows and orphans or something widows and orphans were that that was for bonds. Well, you saw grannies taking money. I remember hearing stories about this in 1999, 2000, who had gone from not the conservative aspect of bonds into Merck or dividend stocks, other dividend stocks, and things like that. They went straight from bonds into AOL, um, all these different, uh, different crazy name stocks that used only eyeballs and, and said, we're doing fantastically. We have three million eyeballs. Four, of the, four million came from my cousin hitting his, um, his eye button over and over. So I suspect that there's still something to come. And then I think we've got to really look at what happens after that. Oh, well, that's a good. That's a lovely way to start the Friday. Let's go through this. Um, big questions came in. So that was Hood was mentioned. Yes, I, we have not gone into Hood. I think it's going to be a play. Uh, I don't know when. Oh, 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 is that is that the bell? The bell says, get on with the show. I'm going to get on this show right now. Um, there was a question that I had. And I didn't see it. Uh, 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 Devon Energy again, Devon Energy right here, Devon Energy holding very well. Remember I said that it's holding well. Uh, it's one of the better ones, Devon Energy out the back, of 461. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So a question came in about XBI. XBI is the SMB Biotech Fund. It held the chap wave inside track pro, uh, propellant zone beautifully. The histogram's improving a little bit. Stochastic's lousy at 11%. The on-balance volume made a W formation. That's good. I just think that this is an area that is starting to build some kind of support. I'm a little concerned about the biotech, other than specific, I'd say specific biotech stocks. What I'm really looking at in terms of just, you know, Kendall Square here in Massachusetts and Cambridge, uh, that whole area, Cambridge, Kendall Square, now it's Boston, and it's, now they're starting Watertown. They're getting all the peripheral areas they've been building and building. My suspicion is that that area is becoming a lot more specific. They had that huge thing with Amgen. Amgen, I think, I drove by it recently. I'm thinking Norwell, Norwood, Norwood, somewhere around there. Um but I think that uh, it's very specific areas that could work. And um, what I would do is just look at really good stocks in this environment. So I don't want to get carried away here by saying, oh, this is it. This is the, the I'm saying for sure. Well, first of all, I don't know how long I've been talking since November. I've been talking about the QQQs being the weakest link of all. And then I spoke about it, a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, and a sell signal in the, at least in the, uh, in the monthly chart. And I've now got a down arrow, and that says, actually, the QQQs on a monthly basis, I probably should wait a little bit, but they're at least in a sell signal. I haven't got a sell mode designation yet. So, I, I mean, how anyone, and, and for subscribers, We've got this huge, cat, one of the biggest cash positions we've had in, I don't know, forever. Just a huge cash position. Traders, we've been in and out, in and out. That's fine. We've made some money. We're not that much, but it's good with the down market. It's good that you're making money. No, I did not have shorts like I should have. I just, um, I was so busy concentrating on other things that I did not go to the short side like I should have. I mean, once or twice, but not enough. And within that context, cash is king. There's no question about it. At this particular point, there's a chance there are just some areas that you can deploy some money to, and part of it would be a trading position for at least some kind of follow through. It's not the Monday scenario that I was looking at. This is premature, and premature means that you are looking at the chance that this is just another one of those bounces, and you have to treat it that way, put your stops in, etc. If it turns out to be even more, and you've got a position that's held all the stops and it's going even higher, that's a wonderful situation. But you, because of the, the VIX index and because of the way we came off the low yesterday and the way we bounced today, that's not the kind of climactic low that says to me, wow, that's a low where you just got to really put money to work. 
Just wanted to clear that up. Now, the, the, the question is, so I'm going through the questions here, SMHs. SMHs, still for me the big clue, this is, this is the indicator that we need to follow because so far, they, none of them are starting to show any sign that says, wow, um, now it's time to get into the semiconductor index. So until the semiconductor for me uh, shows some kind of some kind of strength that is persistent to making higher highs and higher lows in the weekly, not the daily, not to say you couldn't get a buy signal before that. I'm just saying in the bigger picture, intermediate term, this is a, an area that just says to me, at this particular point, there's still that chip shortage. It's I'm sure that when it finally comes, will this create the kind of glut that I've been talking about that's really going to hinder the semiconductor index, or will there be such a backlog that they use up that inventory very quickly? I don't know. So that's the SMHs trading right now up uh, 8.75 at 229. There's a chance that we are forming a cup formation. You wonder it went underneath a key number. I think it was 220, um, uh, 216. Yeah, 216. Let's see what the low was yesterday. 215.23. I know someone out there is uh, watching that 216 level where it went under it and turned up. So we'll see if that's going to be a significant moment. I'm watching that weekly candle as well. Because here again, this could be a really nice rally, but it could be a shorter term rally rather than just, just a bounce and failure or a rally that is sustainable all the way into maybe June. I don't know yet. All right, next thing we're looking at, numbers. So the questions came in. I hope I haven't missed anything in the den. If you could re retype it, I'd appreciate that. Questions that you had earlier on. Uh, Tesla, yep, T-S-L-A. Uh, Tesla had a bounce off um, the low that was made at seven, at 693. 680 round number low did not see that yesterday 680 round number low Ooh, i wonder what happened to um nike also had a round number low um so 680 round number low trading at 768 i would say that an 80 point rally is pretty good 40 points up today at 768.32 this is more a relief rally and this is another thing the clue is that i don't think that the tlt oh, sorry the tlt the tesla I think it needs more to the downside. Um, and I'm basing that on the weekly chart because it went underneath the left side low in an H pattern. And the weekly, the monthly chart is starting to fail. So I think Tesla is under pressure. I don't think it, I mean, this is probably Twitter and, 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 and uh, uh, Musk. Uh, Twitter's down at 41.05. I don't want to get in. I, I have no intention of getting into that whole thing right now. I, I had a, a question. Someone asked me about uh, Twitter. Why should I hold it? Because it's a, 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 it should go to the 54 offer. I said I wouldn't touch it. It's just too volatile. This uh, You can see the dreaded H pattern within the, the um, rectangle formation plunges down. Weekly chart doesn't look good. That's Twitter. But the question was Tesla. And I would say relief rally. But my suspicion is that uh, uh, Tesla still has to test the six, uh, 60s. That's going to be really important to me. And if it takes that out, 600 will be the next level. I think the resistance between 807, the 9 period moving average, 840, the 14 period moving average. And if it gets above that by uh, within a week and a half, that if it does it very quickly, I'd say that's impressive. But if it kind of does it with a kind of draggy movement and it gets to the 888, 200 period moving average level, I'll have to reassess. But I, I think there's a lot of resistance out there. Just got to be real careful. Even today, it's just, I, I say to subscribers, treat this once. I look, peak D in the, there it is. You wait for your peak Ds in the Chapman Wave methodology. There's your peak D in the 10 minute chart. I'd hit a high off. Uh, 4019 round number high in the uh, E mini. Uh, just a round number in this case, it's an E mini. It's not as important as if you're going in, in, in pennies. Uh, but we'll be watching this closely. I'll come back again in a moment, but let's look at this. So that was a question there. So Tesla as a trade, I uh, a dollar. Did I do the dollar? Did I do all this? I don't even remember. Doji candle at a leg, F in the upside. In the daily, F in the weekly, and a C, only a C in the monthly, and that says it should go even higher in 2022. But in the meantime, I think that the dollar is 
very, I've got the rectangle here. I think it's very close. You're starting to chop a little bit, a little bit here. And it can make high highs, but I think that it's trying to form a base because the 102 level is going to be absolutely imperative to hold. And that will impact gold because gold right now is down strongly, down 13 and 18 on that. I'll be back and we've got all these stocks. Oh, got a little bit of a section to go. I'll do that. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day, five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the markets real-time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. So we got a little Doji Candle round number 105.00, all time, a, a, a 20 year at least high in the dollar. Thank you, Cody, for, for pointing that out. I always have these people looking out for round numbers for me or correcting my notations. And this is going to be very important because if there's a bit of a pullback here, we might start to see that gold actually sees a little bit of a bid. But I don't like the fact that gold took out that low, uh, that took out that up channel, little mini up channel called the Chapman Wave inside track support level. Now it's a resistance area. So we're going to be watching the next couple of days. So let me do this. I, 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 I've still got a ton of stocks, but there were a lot of things I had to talk about today that were really important, at least in the bigger picture. So uh, making a low like we did yesterday and then running sharply today is really important. It's a good sign and it says, yes, there is absolutely a relief rally unfolding right now. But if you're looking at certain things, I don't think that this is the low. I just think it's a low. And I think it's one of the better lows that we've seen in a while. The best would have been if we had a lousy close today and then a horrible news stories over the weekend and then terrible selling on Monday. And by Monday afternoon at about 
three ten in the afternoon, maybe ten to ten to ten to three. Just as Tom's doing this show, we get this magnificent turnaround with the VIX and the volume, all that stuff that you always like to look at, and we start to. That would have been a much bigger. I think rally and longer term. So this is great right now. The VIX index is 29.55. If a SARS move back to 30.75 later today, you will see some sell off. But if a SARS is slight under 29, this means it has some legs to the up. The market has some legs to the upside. Just using the Dow as, as some people use the S&P, I'll use the Dow. Uh, 466. If it's if it if if off the 220 to 240, it is only up. Uh, maybe 270, that's not a good sign. But it's, if it's holding here or getting stronger, that's perhaps have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned for Larry Pizzamento coming up on the news and the Larry Show. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday.